Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video where we're going to spend a few minutes looking at two possible exceptions to the law of demand, namely Giffen goods and Veblen goods. Now, there are possible exceptions to the, to the usual, the normal law of demand. Uh, we'll look at each in turn, but Giffen goods essentially are very highly inferior products that have very few close substitutes. Veblen goods, on the other hand, are high luxury products at the other end, if you like, of the income consumption spectrum. Uh, and very strongly, there is a link between people buying these Veblen goods and gaining utility, satisfaction, kudos, if you like, from what's called conspicuous consumption. Uh, there is actually very limited evidence that Giffen goods exist in certainly in high income countries. Probably Veblen goods are more likely in reality than Giffen goods. Quick recap before we look at the two on the law of demand. The law of demand states that other factors remaining the same, or ceteris paribus, the quantity bought of a good or service varies inversely with the price charged. And uh, if prices fall, we see an expansion of demand. If prices go up, that causes demand to contract. So if we think about the normal downsloping demand curve for a product, if the price goes down from P1 to P2, we see an expansion down the demand curve from Q1 to Q2. But if the price goes up from P1 to P3, then other things being the same, the level of demand, quantity demanded for this product goes down. There's a contraction of demand. Now, why is this the case? Well, for normal goods, the quantity demanded expands as prices fall uh, because of the substitution and the real income effects. As the price of the good uh, falls, uh, there's a positive substitution effect in the sense that people switch towards that product from relatively cheaper competing goods and services in the market. And of course, the cross price elasticity of demand tries to capture the size of that substitution effect. And there's also a positive real income effect on demand in the sense that if the price goes down, uh, if prices are falling, people's real incomes go up. They can afford to buy more of something. Uh, and normal goods have a positive income elasticity of demand. So therefore, people tend to buy more of something if they're able to. So therefore, if we, if we combine the two, the substitution and the income effect working in the same direction, in the sense that when prices go down, we expect to see an expansion along the demand curve. Well, Giffen goods and Veblen goods, in theory, provide a counterpoint, an exception to that law of demand. A Giffen good. And here we see the picture of Sir Robert Giffen, uh, who died actually before the First World War. A Giffen good is essentially a product where if the price goes up, uh, we might see an increase in demand. And this is because the income effect is so strongly negative in terms of people's ability to buy the goods and services that it, uh, that it actually outweighs the, the substitution effect. Now, all Giffen goods are inferior goods, but not all inferior goods are Giffen goods. So typically, Giffen goods, things like own label, pasta, rice, bread, for example, often with, with particularly low income families and households, they take up a quite a, a chunky percentage of the disposable income of low income families. And higher prices for these products are such a drain on real purchasing power that people to maintain their if you like their calorific consumption, their basic living standards, they, they have to cut back on other things because they become less affordable with real incomes going down. And therefore, people may just buy more of these. Um, they're forced to curtail their sort of spending on other things and they tend to buy more basic, basic products. Hence, demand might go up as uh, when prices are rising. A Veblen good is very different to a Giffen good. A uh, Veblen good is a good where the demand goes up as price goes up because people enjoy the status the kudos that comes from conspicuous consumption of, in particular, high quality luxury products like jewellery or watches or very high priced designer clothes. The theory was first discussed by the American economist and sociologist Thornstein Veblen. Uh, here he is pictured and he wrote a book called The Theory of the Leisure Clash, the Leisure Class, in 1899. So Veblen goods are generally bought 
sought after and bought by fairly high income affluent consumers who place a premium on the utility of the good. People get satisfaction from being seen by others to be consuming those high priced luxury goods, designer jewelry, expensive cars, because being seen to consume it is it indicates that you have a sufficiently high income to be able to afford the products. You flaunt your your wealth or your income in that sense. Linked to a Veblen good is the idea of a positional good, which I think is actually quite an important idea. So positional good developed, first of all, by um, the American, so the Austrian-British uh, economist and, and journalist Fred Hirsch. I think he died in the late 70s, pictured here. Fred Hirsch developed the of positional goods, goods that are valued only by how they're distributed amongst the population. So high price, high luxury products are, if you like, status goods. They tell you where you are on the curve in terms of people's income and consumption. Um, and, and high prices ration who can actually afford to buy and consume these positional goods. So high prices effectively ration, well, they, they cut the effective demand for these products. And therefore, when prices goes up, again, it's an indicator of relative position in the hierarchy of, of consumers. And, and some people want to buy more of those because it gives them that position in a distribution. Going back to Giffen goods, why might demand increase when the price of a Giffen good goes up? Well, Giffen goods typically have very few close substitutes. They're basic products which don't really have many substitutes in their own right. And... Critically, they have a very highly negative income elasticity of demand. So, when price goes up, normally people buy less of something. There is always a substitution effect causing demand to fall. But in the case of Giffen goods, that, that effect is really quite low. It's quite limited because just, there aren't many available suitable substitutes. So the substitution effect doesn't really cause a fall in demand. Whereas when prices go up, real incomes go down. And because the income elasticity of demand for giving goods is strongly negative, consumers buy more. They tend to buy, they tend to focus their consumption on products with a highly negative income elasticity of demand. So overall, a higher price can cause demand to rise rather than contract. And that can lead to the demand curve sloping upwards, an exception to the law of demand. If the price goes up from P1 to P2, we might see a modest increase or expansion of demand. Highly unlikely to be a significant increase, but it can possibly happen. And this is the demand curve, which is sometimes called the perverse demand curve, which slopes upwards from left to right. Just a minute or two on extension analysis. Not every exam board requires you to use indifference curves. So if you don't, can quite easily skip to my final slide. But just very quickly, in difference curve and diagrams, let's take two goods, good X and good T. Good T, by the way, is going to be an a Giffen good. There's our budget line showing what we can afford to buy. And we assume that there's a big increase in the price of T, good T, income remaining the same. So the budget line shifts to the left or pivots. We can still buy the same amount of good X, but we can't buy as much as, as we could before with good T, effectively real income though, the price of good T has doubled effectively. So the budget line shifts to the left and this might cause the equilibrium choices of the consumer to change. This is the consumer equilibrium where the indifference curve is tangential to the budget line. So initially demand for good T is D1, but at the new budget line, we have to move on to a lower indifference curve, IC2, and you can see here that the way that the indifference curve have been drawn and shaped, the equilibrium is a big fall in quantity demanded of good X, but a small increase in the quantity demanded of good T, despite the fact that the price of T has gone up, uh, precipitating an inward shift of the budget line. So this would be an, an Giffen good using indifference curve analysis. Now, if you want to get to the next level, I haven't included the income and substitution effects on this diagram. I've just shown two indifference curves, two equilibrium points, where when the price goes up for good tea, people actually end, end up buying more of, of that product. Hence, a Giffen good. There's another alternative explanation. Why do people buy more when prices are rising? Well, in part, that might be because people expect 
or forecast a further price increase. So you might be buying, I don't know, wheat or something, you might be buying copper, or you might be buying antiques, not for their own intrinsic value or usefulness, but because you think the price is going to go even higher in the future. So there could be an increase in the quantity demanded when prices are rising. But that's really essentially a speculative demand. This is when a commodity becomes an asset, which is traded in markets. And so people are buying more when prices are rising. But effectively, what's happening there is that speculative demand is can be modelled quite easily by just showing an outward shift of the demand curve, rather than it being an example of an exception to the law of demand, a perverse demand curve. So there are exceptions to the law of demand. I don't think they're very frequent or very common, but some example boards ask you to cover them. In particular, the concept of the Giffen good and the Verblen good, or and I've called it also the positional good. So hopefully this video has helped you understand a little bit about both of those two possible exceptions to the law of demand. Huge thanks for joining in once more. Stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves, and please pop by sometime soon.